My name is Charles Friedrichs, and I'm with... Uh, Cookie, Rosemary. Okay. Cookie. So Cookie and I have been talking, yes. and uh, she was just uh, testifying that she knows a few people, uh, this and that. Uh, she does smoke, but that's about it. So you were saying you did go to AA and no, NA. No, many years, AA, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, I'm not against them, but you know, like, uh, and some people have a higher power. My, my higher power, yes, I choose to be God, I'm a and Christian. But the thing is that they, what happens is that it's like, you feel like over and over again you're talking about the same thing over and over yep. and over and over I know you know I see when God I, I, when God delivers you you know what I'm saying that's it I mean not that, not that you're not tempted every day yeah. and I know you every day yeah I'm sure that you're tempted absolutely to get high again Ab absolutely and there are many people out there and they even have about the heroin that they, they, it's, it's horrible yeah my first husband I met him I was 17 he was on the methadone program. Right. And you know what that is? A government high. Wow. That's all that is, a government yeah. high. Yeah. I thank God for these places that, you know, for recovery. Yeah. That people can go. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, it's... But you're it's, absolutely right about the temptation. I mean, I can walk into... Every but day, you know what? Every I, day. Here are things that I think about. The consequences. Yeah. And am I serving my Lord then if I'm yeah, doing that? Because right. wouldn't I be a hypocrite to sit here and, and tell yeah. you not to do it if I'm going to do it? Well, you know what? One thing I do know, God's grace and mercy. And I tell people, if you have a slip, God forbid, you pick yourself up. Absolutely. And you start over. That's what I tell everyone. One day at a time. That is a good from one yep. day at a time. Yeah. You know what? No, but it's true. Pick yourself up. Don't ever go back into the old abusive ways mm -hmm. and, and take yourself in to, and move forward. The reason I felt that AA wasn't helping me is I needed to be more active. Oh, thank you. Honey. How thank you doing? You. Hi, I'm Ralph. Yeah, nice well, you. Right, you know what? I needed to be more active, and this is my way of doing it. If on here, on the oh, card. Oh, here, what you doing on, now, right? Yeah, this yellow card on the back of here. Okay. On the back, there's a yellow card. There's going to be a website on there, okay? Which, oh, I'll get it. Uh, it's www.clearviews. Right. Right okay. on here. Uh, right there. All right. Go on there, and I have over a hundred videos that I've made already that have been in schools, that have been in the jails, that have been in AA meetings. Go on there and take a look. I will. But, but what I will tell you is that the reason I came up with Clear View is the name Clear. You know what I decided to do? Yeah. Community Lessons Empower Addiction Recovery. Wow. It is your lesson and my lesson that's going to help whoever's going to listen to this tape yeah. recorder. Community Lessons. And my other business is Clear Reform. Community lessons at, uh, empower addiction recovery. Reform means to transform, to reform you. That's funny, you know, you're saying that because the church, they get ready to go to the be copy. Yeah. When you become born again, you become transformed. You have reformed. That's it's very, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know? And that, that's that's yeah. the name of that. And right now, wow. I just became an addiction recovery coach after graduating from school. I'm okay. an optician by trade. I've been doing that for 30 years. Ah, you mean I? Right. So right now, for right now, what I'm doing is I'm doing this for free to build up my self confidence and how to deal with people. And keeps you, like you said, it keeps, keeps you. me active. It keeps me active because what I learned at the university at a program right. is only out of a book. One on one interaction is my oh, best right lessons down, in the right world. Down. Yeah, and uh, being that I'm originally from the neighborhood here, oh, I used to walk okay. to this liquor shop and walk to my house on Bogota Road and drink 15 shots of vodka just in the one walk wow. to get my fill. Now we've moved to the Hamptons, my wife and I. We okay. still have a house. All right. But uh, I decided to come into my neighborhood that I was, well, and still am an alcoholic, but I've learned to live with God it. because you back here. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? You're always going to have that addiction. Always. It's how you always. live with it and how you conquer it. But you know it. what? One thing, that, that, that's who Jesus died for. He died for the drug addict. Yeah. He died for the alcoholic. Yes. That's who he died Amen for. Amen to that. He didn't die for the people that were, I mean, not that, he loves everybody, mm -hmm. the rich, the poor. Yeah. But that's who, he sat with the sinner. Yeah. And that's who he died for. Absolutely. So you in a perfect spot right yeah. here, let me yeah. tell you. I spoke to him the other area, day. area, oh my God. Yeah. Oh. I used to come here uh, yes. years ago to help him with uh, other things. and uh, I knew him many years ago before he... he there you go. Many, many and years. I created Mastic Beach Outreach 2011 when I was still an alcoholic and God still let me write well, my we, own... We will pray for you because believe me, it's need, it is yeah. needed. But I speak about your book of life and my book of life. We all have chapters in our That's book right. of life. We do, yes we and do. And the last chapters in your book are the most important chapters because God will forgive no matter what the chapters were before. God will forgive you for that. But you know, my problem always was forgiving myself. I know, that's the... I know the but I if thought, God's willing to forgive you, forgive exactly yourself. now. Yeah. Now, I, I've learned that. 
yeah. and learn to forgive myself. Exactly. But it took a lot. I'm going to be 60 years old. Oh, wow. Well, a few years older 1978. Than me, wow. I gave my heart to Jesus. You know, longer than that. Wow. I gave my heart to him, yeah. But I have many, like I said, I have many, many people I know that have been, they have testimonies, and I know they would talk. Right, right. They would talk and, and share with other people. Right. I have a cousin that, di that died. She's with the Lord now. But because of drug addiction, when I went to see her, she looked 90 years old. That's what the drug did to her. Wow. Her she said, Cookie, if I can tell you anything before I take my last breath, oh, she said, tell him, don't do the drugs. Oh. She looked 90 years old. Oh, my she God. was a gorgeous, beautiful girl. She was maybe 40, 50 years old. Oh. And she looked 90. That's what the drugs did to her. You know? But see, it's hard because that tough love. Yeah. To get somebody to get that help. Right. But people you have to have that. People don't realize the it's addiction hard. is the devil. And it doesn't matter if you're black or white. It doesn't matter no if you're race, rich no or color. poor. It doesn't matter. If you allow it to be in you, and you know what? I don't buy anyone telling me that they can't do it because they can. But you need to have two things, the will That's right. and your higher power. Yes. If you don't have, if yeah. you only have one of those, because I've always had the higher power. I was born right. as a, in a Christian family. I was raised Catholic. I yeah. was raised Catholic. But I never had the will until I hit rock bottom. I can tell you the exact date, oh. June 22nd <laughs> of 2013, I hit rock bottom where I just knew if I didn't do something right there and then, my life was over. For my oldest son, because of, and people don't realize, it is, they say the genes, there are also the spiritual world out there. All right. As sure as there's a God, there was a, there was a, a, a Satan. Yes. And there are strongholds that, yeah. of alcoholism, of drug addicts. Because my first husband, like I said, I met him. Well, guess what? My son, my oldest son, became a heroin addict. Yeah. It carries on. It's not just in your genes, but I, I, when you look at my videos, there's a video, it's called Role Model. The kids look at you as the hero. Yes. So if you're going to curse in front of them, they're going to think it's okay. If you're going to hit domestic, they're going to, right. if you're right. going to drink or smoke, they're going to say, well, my parents, that's why you have Jerry Springer and Maury and all those oh, guys in business. Yeah, oh, God. Because it's monkey see, monkey do attitude. We as parents and grandparents, in my case now, yeah, we, we, are, yeah, yeah, we, we have to be role models. We do. And it took a lot of years, but you know what? God forgave me up until... June 22nd, 2013, and my new life started at that yes. point. And I feel that it was God that's telling me I need to help me by helping others. Uh, I was in the Marine Corps, and I was a lay leader in the Marine Corps, which is a pastor. That's what I did in the Marine Corps. Wow. But I was still an alcoholic, so God just let me run my own life until I oh, knew yeah, I had will. to reach out to him. He will. He got, he got made with a free will. Yeah. He didn't make robots. Yeah, exactly. We had the choice. Like my, my son that passed two years ago, all right, my, my son. Peter, uh, I have seven kids. To, uh, September fifth, he hit a tree at William Floyd Park. Oh no! He's with Jesus, but uh, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little. I, you get angry. I was, I was, and I said, I, I don't know what. And my my pastor, my friend, said that it wasn't his time to go. The enemy robbed him of his life. Yeah. He was in his thirties. Yeah. All right. I mean, he was he had he was he's I can lie. Sold by marijuana. It was all in his car. When I went down to get his property, they gave me, they kept the, the, the they gave me the scale, everything. I don't know, only God knows. Yeah. If he, if he started a new job, he was working two weeks, it was five in the morning. I don't know, God knows. Right. But because of my first husband was hit by three cars. Oh my God. I was 23. I did not want the autopsy. My kids wanted me to get it. I said, you know what? I don't want to redo autopsy because it doesn't matter. Because of my first husband was... It tormented me. I read it and it goes into every detail. Oh, wow. And I, for years and years and years, I did not want to read that. But I, I know my first husband, are you kidding? I used to worry every night he, was, he would overdose and die in, in the bathtub. One thing he respected, he never did it in the house, never brought it home to the house. Right. But I knew when he came home. Yeah, he was a closet. I knew closet. when he came home closet. that he was sitting there, nodding. I said, please don't lock the bathroom door. Right. Please don't lock the door. Every night I, I, I afraid I'd find him dead in the bathtub. Wow. Dead in the bathtub. But people, they're afraid to talk. Do they're you realize to... that your life experience, for somebody to actually see how you're making those faces to me one day would be so worth people. Like I do my videos every day in front of the camera, an hour a day with a lot of commercials and I'm sponsored. If you ever, you call me, if you ever feel comfortable enough, I would be. No tea, you know? Yeah, that's okay. My mom doesn't. My wife doesn't have it on top either. But if you ever do, call me, okay? Because your testimony 
when people see a face and they they're going to hear the voice but if they ever get to see your face that's going to have an impact yes i interviewed a childhood friend in texas who lost her husband and her brother-in-law and her mother all within 12 months and she became so heavily involved in drugs and alcohol oh yeah and she started hating god but now she's recovered from all that and i mean when my first husband died okay because we were starting a new life we were moving to florida he was going down he had been you know clean for like a, free, a while and we were going to move and it happened December 16th I'll never forget that day wow. and nine days I get a phone call he was only there uh, a few weeks six weeks maybe and I get a phone call I'm thinking oh okay well you know maybe uh, he's in the hospital okay no no there's nothing they could do nothing they could do what do you mean nothing they could do then it hit me alright I was 23 I've been very young in life that life is short yeah none of us are guaranteed tomorrow no absolutely not and when I think back when we were together I, I think back of all the craziness and the, you know, and, and it's just, and you try to tell people because you want, you know, you try to tell your kids. But the second one, I was single parent 10 years before I remarried. It wasn't easy, it was hard. And I try to tell when I, when I married my second husband, he had, was an alcoholic, schizophrenia, depression, you know? Oh, wow. And it's like, you tell them, but it's like my mother. I didn't listen to my mother. I didn't listen to my mom. I, I was rebellious. Do you think you knew it better? No. You think, like I always thought we, we want to tell them we, we love you. We don't want to see you. Yeah. They got to go through it like I, yeah. like we went through it. Yeah, yeah. You know, we want to tell them, but tough love is hard to do. It really is. And, and you're, I mean, you've lost people. And people, and, that, wow. people that have like, they say, oh, I can't do that. They want, But you know they're going to buy drugs. Today. You know they're going to get high. You can't control you everything. Know, feed them, bring them, you know, bring them food, give them somewhere to sleep at night maybe. But once you give them that money, you know they're going to buy drugs in yeah. So, think. Yeah. But it's, it's not easy. Well, you know what? You know what? I, I said this in one of my videos. I don't know if you realize, but every person has a legal drug dealer living in their own home. Oh, yeah. And you know where that is? It's in your own bathroom. Yeah. Oh, it is yeah. the Mr. Medicine Cabinet. I choose to and call. And with these? Yeah. Oh, they'll get high. I mean, when I was a kid, they took, in high school, you know, they had the bags and the, and the strip and the glue. Nowadays, there's so much more. Right. They're doing the cough medicine, this everything to get high. Yeah. And the too many parents work, yeah. and they don't even know what their kids are doing. They don't look on the computer. They don't check up. I tell them, what is it? My, my daughter, I tell her, look on her phone. Yeah. What is she doing? Who is she talking to on the phone? Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. Wake up, America. Hello. <laughs> you know, on the news, they said about just recently the heroin. Yeah, it's going to be on Monday on Channel yeah, 12. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, wake up, hello everybody. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's walking uh, around like everything's okay, it's not. Yeah, yeah you're right. But listen, if... the alcohol is illegal, they say alcohol is illegal, that's one of the worst. It's I, because you're driving a car they're possibly. They're about the, the crack and the heroin. What about alcohol? Yeah, alcohol and marijuana. Legal. Yeah, now they're legalizing now they're, marijuana. Exactly, and the other state is yeah. working its way. I know. Medical use. Uh, yeah. Medical use. Yeah, but that's a... Uh, everything's about money is what it really comes down to. That. Everything's about money, but... Listen, I want to thank you, and... Uh, no problem, honey. Uh, I have your... Give me a call if you... Let me just shut this off here. All right. And uh, give me a call. Well, we are just walking down the road here and to see there are people already walking around with cans of beer in their hand and uh, uh, most of the people that are walking around with the cans of beer in their hand look very intoxicated already uh, which tells me um, that weekends seem to be the best time for them to do their drinking or the only time hopefully uh, eventually they won't drink at all but uh, uh, that seems to be the case right now and um, so uh, there are two people walking towards me I'm going to try to get a quick interview with them and uh, to see how we can maybe help them with their uh, alcohol drug addiction as such
How you guys doing? Hi, do you guys drink alcohol? Do you guys drink alcohol? No, no, you don't know alcohol, no drugs? No, because I'm here to help you if you are. Okay? Well, they claim they don't drink anything. Okay. Let's see what this is all about over here. Hi. Can I give you this? It's just for a drug alcohol addiction. If you know anybody, I'm here to help them for free. You just Yeah, you just call me. And if you look on the other side of this card, there's a website. I have over 100 videos that I've created on addiction, domestic abuse, uh, role model ship in their home, stuff like that. So, okay. Yes, I'm sorry. All right. Have a great day. Hi. Do you know anybody that does has any alcohol or drug addiction? <laughs> let me give you let me give you a couple of them. I do that for free. I I'm an addiction recovery coach, and I also help people with uh, problems if they are if they abuse other people or. Yes, my daughter is crying, but it's hard. You have to want it in here and with God. Yes. If you don't have both of them combined, yes, then she knows that she goes to church and she goes back out and she weakens and somebody come up with it and say, "I'll give this to you free." She has three beautiful kids and a oh. baby seven months old. Oh my God! Yeah. Yes, and I get scared. She can't have money in her hands because she says, "I'm doing better, Mom." And then the minute she gets money in her hands, that's it. Oh boy. And I stay there. I sit with her baby all night because I I was in the foster home. Oh. And God forbid, I don't want them taking it to right. the foster home. I was an alcoholic. Uh, I, I, up until June 22nd, 2013. And I, I lost my daughter six months. Oh, gee. I went to go to the train track and a train almost knocked my head off. Wow. I turned around, I went and sat at the meeting at St. Uh, at, um, like, like you said, uh, I worked there for 13 years, Lighthouse Mission. Oh, okay. And I sat there and I said, I went up to them and I said, listen, I'm an alcoholic. They didn't believe because they always saw me and they prayed for me. I said, oh, I'll go home and have a couple of beers. My brother said, there's a couple of beers. No, bro, I don't want it today. He said, sister, there's more beer. No, two years and two months. For you being sober, good for you. My daughter that I've talked about came out from North Carolina. That day I went to a whole case of beer because I knew she was going to sit there and leave the house and leave me with her kids. So you had a case because you were stressing? I knew what she was going to do to me. That night she went out and... Dad, somebody tells me he's taking care of her kids, taking them to school, and she stayed there for around three months and then she got home. Uh, 16 years. I've been praying. I go to this church, I pray. 16 years. She's a beautiful person, good intentions, but she messes the devil with her. Yeah. And, you know, addiction doesn't care I if know, you're black, I white. Know. They don't if, care if, if you're rich kids, or poor. It doesn't matter if it could suck me. you in. I see her come in the house and not even my daughter. Wow. Not even my daughter I'm looking at. She's getting old looking, right? No, matter of fact, she's, she's getting glowing. prettier. Ah, <laughs> well, you know. The when, devil can trick you, make you say, yeah. well, this is the way you're going to look if you do it. Some people don't look this way, but he's tricking Now, you. when you had that case of beer, did you feel guilty about it afterwards? No. I said, I've been so dippy because what I'm going to with her after I stopped again. And listen to this. My sister had a heart attack. Ooh. 16 year old son, I'm not 16, he was like 20. He's going to commit suicide. I am I said him three weeks after that. I started to go back to drink. I said, no, hold on. A month later, my they came to me and said, your brother just died. Mm. Still didn't drink. I went on a Sunday to get a case of beer. He said, you can't buy beer Sunday. I said, can I buy the towel more? And I stopped again. Stopped again. So now how long has it been? Now two years? Uh, or do you just longer. longer now? Longer. Good for you. Crying, temptation. I go to the store and I see the fear and I'm stressed out. And I say, no, walk away. Do you uh, do you like to watch videos and stuff like that? I look at on the, the back of this card. Uh huh. Right there is my email. I mean, my web address. You oh, see, it says beautiful. clear on there. I've been on channel 11. I've I have three channels on. If you go on clearviews.info, mm -hmm. there's about 80 videotapes. I do a videotape every day for one hour. Definitely but what the CLEAR stands for is Community Lessons Empower Addiction Recovery. It's your lessons and my lessons yeah. that I help other people. 
So go on there. Yes, I if, definitely will. And if you ever want to talk to me, my phone number is on I'll there. Give me a call. It was such a pleasure. And I hope you, you stay know, off as much as I... And you know what people need somebody to call when they're attempting to do this. Exactly. There's not enough people. He tried at the church to do it for people, but they go for a week and then they leave. So he gave it up. Yeah. You have to be consistent, though. Yeah. You know, um, I like I said, I... Uh, am an alcoholic, mm-hmm. but I've learned to live with it now, mm-hmm. which I've now for almost two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, in between, I do eyeglasses for a living. I'm an optician. Mm-hmm. In between there, I, uh, God introduced me to Dr. Luis Gonzalez, and he's in Minnesota, and he runs a, an addiction coaching school. He gave me my education for nothing because mm-hmm. of my videos, and I graduated two months two months ago. I graduated, and we got one wrong on my, my finals. So usually, uh, eventually I'm going to charge people, but I want to build up my confidence yes. and my resume by yes. doing it for nothing. And this is my streets. Oh. I used to do my drinking here. Oh, the liquor shop to Pagoda, to yes. Pagoda Road, I drink every day a couple yes. of shots. Uh, since then, I moved to the Hamptons because yeah. my wife works out there. My family, unfortunately, I'm not blaming because they're Indian, but they're heavy, heavy. Dude. My mother's from the Tunica Reservation. Right. Yes, right. And they all drink it but one daughter. Right. My father had nine of us. He said, if one is good, I'm a blessed man. That's right. Well, yeah. you know, I always say that if I get two people yeah. out of each video, yeah. guess who one person is? Always yeah. me. Because my me talking to you right now mm-hmm. refreshes my memory yeah. on how I want to make sure that I stay yeah. clean. And when you pe- meet people like me and mm-hmm. I show you stuff like mm-hmm. this, if you go on there, it's going to be videos on domestic abuse, about yeah. drinking and being pregnant. Yeah. I have videos that covers everything, mm-hmm. and they're on DVDs now, and I don't charge people for any of this. Definitely, definitely go on there. And the blue card, the other mm-hmm. side, mm-hmm. this is my help card. Okay. My phone number is right there. Just okay. If you want to just talk to me, you just call me anytime, no, okay? You know what? This is no lie. I have to come here to talk to uh, to uh, Pastor Adam the other day. Yeah, and he goes to me, Ralph. I've known you for a lot of years now because I used to do other things, you know, like uh, helping older people. And he goes, Do you know of an electrician? And out of nowhere, because they were ready to ch- shut his church down, yes, I heard. I yeah. Out of nowhere, the electrician came and helped him already. Yes, yes, yes. And I said to myself, why not come back to where I was the biggest drinker yes. and talk to people like Charlie? You know Charlie? I, Charlie, you left. Yeah, where I he, wanted he to interview to, him. He went to South Carolina oh. because he was getting, I could probably leave here. They wanted to beat him up. I know that he went to jail he for his go away. Get away oh, so me. he's gone. Okay. He's gone. Yeah, and you know there was a, a, a middle-aged, uh, heavier set lady that used to sit at the, the bench over there drinking mm-hmm. all day. You know what happened to her? No, no you don't even know. But uh, like Pat is good friends with my my mother is a German oh, lady that. Oh, Pat is my best. Friend. Yeah, well, you probably know my mother. She has a stroller, gray hair. Sometimes she has my handicapped sister, and she's yeah, German. Yeah, I know. Margaret's yes. her name. That's my mother. Oh, yeah, God. and I was raised in a Christian family. When I was an alcoholic. I always had the God in me, mm-hmm. but that wasn't good enough because no. God said, when you're ready to come to me yes. and accept me for guidance, when I finally hit rock bottom is when God set yes. me to do this. When I was in the Marine Corps, I used to be a chaplain mm-hmm. in the Marines. Oh, wow. So this is my calling. Yes. Even though I make money doing my eyeglasses, mm-hmm. this is what I need to do. Wow. God bless you. And so you call you me for me. anything. I say God is in the midst, and this is beautiful because I was thinking about this yesterday. Yeah. Like right. Came and have a phone number where when you feel down and the person wants to do that. Like, just call, like, just like, to call. Yeah. Like, and you know what? Um, I think maybe on a Sunday, I'll just come down here for an hour or two and just walk the streets. I was going to go into the church and do it there, but I'm disrupting his service then. Yes. So if I just walk okay, around... what I'm going to tell you is on Wednesday, we have a Bible study. Okay. And the gentleman that teaches Bible study, he's very, he would like that. Well, you know what? Give him my card and have him call me. Uh, Abner knows me, so okay. talk to him. And uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. And I, we're going to run into each other again. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Hey, what's up, guys? You got change of dollar on you? I don't have any change on me. Uh, no, my wife took it. Can I give you guys something? Yeah. This is uh, if you have any issues with drugs or alcohol, I help you for free, okay? Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Well, as you can see, another person that I spoke to, another, from what she's telling me is is that they would love to have somebody that just walks up and down the streets here 
just to talk to people, to find out what is going on with and how bad the drugs and alcohol issues are here. And that's what I will do, is I'm going to just go around and talk to people. Because there's probably millions of people that are out here that have drug and alcohol issues. How you doing? Can I give you this? Hi. I'm fighting drugs and alcohol addiction for people. I'm trying to help them for free. If you know anybody, have them give, give me a call. Uh, I don't know if you do drugs or alcohol, if you have any addictions. But if you know people, have them okay. give me a call, okay? Thank you. All right, so we're going to cut this short now. Bye-bye. Right, we're on here. My name is Ralph. I'm an alcoholic, and I just want to introduce your name is your, just your first name. No, you don't want to give your name? Olego. Uh, and your first name? Pedro. Okay. So you you only drink on weekends, right? Yep. And for some reason on a Friday night, somebody is telling you it's time to party up, right? No. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm waiting. You don't forget. Uh, I'm work every day, nine hours. Yeah. That's but, right. but my brain, my brain think. I come in Friday, so that they go drink. Wow. And then that's all I... Do you, you know, drink Do you drink so much that you pass out or you black out? No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then Monday back to work, and that's tough. That's it. Yeah, what about you? How much do you drink? Not as much as him, right? No, not do you have a blackout or... No? Uh, so you, you really have, like I used to have, a really I bad problem. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't myself. know what You can I'm control doing, yourself? You know? yeah. yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. When I black out, Forget it. I can fight. I can do everything, everything. here. It, you're, you know what? You and see they, what you said just said? Yeah, I know. Everything is in here and up there. Mm -hmm. What yeah. it really comes down to is that with your higher power, which is in my case, my God, and everything, he said it, everything's here, no matter where you go, counseling and all that, if it's not in here. I do everything, but yeah. it's all but, in here. If you know what I drink, you know drink. That's right. You're absolutely <laughs> right. You know, yeah. but uh, so what I suggest what you can do is on Friday night, right say okay i'm only going to drink one day this weekend then pick and choose is it going to be saturday or sunday i would suggest to do it saturday and then sunday sober up for the new work week that's one way to start i know it's easier said than done i listen you know that liquor shop i lived right down here i would walk down there and buy 15 shots of vodka and stick in my pockets by the time i walked from the liquor shop to my house over here i drank them all wow. and then i'd be passed out all afternoon so i know what you're saying I had to quit one time. There's a thing called rock bottom. You know what rock bottom is? It's when you hit so low mm -hmm. that you don't have no place else to go. And the only way to control that is, like he said, it's all right here and right here. Yeah. The break. Because, you know, do you, do you yeah. wait all the time to come Friday when, when you work? Say, oh, I, 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 I'm out. I get out of my job, so now I can drink. You sit down, drink, drink. The Friday and then uh, coming Saturday and then coming Sunday like yeah, today. Yeah. What I what I'm doing? I be in the house about three four o'clock in the morning and now I'm drinking again. Yeah, you're drinking. And are you are you right now? now? Tomorrow you... I cut it out. And then you because work. I say I have to go to work, you know. But see, at least you know what's important. What's important is your job. You don't want to lose your job, so you yeah, know you can. That, that will happen. Yeah. Now, because you're not working on the weekend, you figure, hey, now I yeah, can party. So I can do everything I want. Right. And, and what do you no, drink? No, beer? No. Do you drink vodka? Beer. beer, beer? beer. How yeah. many beers a day? 12? 24? 24? 
Twelve twenty-four. More. 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 more what kind of beer usually? Budweiser, Corona. Cool light. Cool. Yeah, that's a lot of alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. You and you, you probably don't eat a lot, percent. right? Because when you drink a lot, you fill up. Your stomach fills up, so you probably don't eat a lot, right? No. The thing is, you know, when you eat, you can, you, you can get full. But when you're drinking, you don't get full. You can keep in drinking, keep in drinking, keep in drinking. Because you're peeing it out, yeah. by the way. You, you, every, uh, you, know, you could be standing by a tree and, and you just and water those trees, you know. Throw, you know? Throw, throw. Yeah. And you can keep it. But at least, if I... More you drink, more if, you, you go to yeah, pee. That's right. You're right. If, if I eat, I don't drink. Right. When I eat... Because I you're full. Because you're full. Yeah. Because you're full. My honestly, can do you think you can try maybe start next week and just drink one out of the two days? Do you think you can do that, or you just it's hard, right? Oh, holy God. you can try, right? Yeah. My job, so yeah, it's I'm a, working in Japan. I don't know, but I, but I have to do something. Well, no I gave what. you that, but this is uh, hold on one second here. I have to do something with that fucking drink because hold on, that's big money, you know? Yeah, from yesterday. That's my other card. If you ever and need today, help, if you, you know, ever need help, you just call me. From yesterday and today, from Friday, at least I spent about two hundred and something dollars. Oh, spent? You're, you're, oh, yes. You're fucking in beer. Wow. So I can say, you know, if I if I want to go to the restaurant, you know, I can sit down like a normal people, you know. Yeah. Is something good? No, just only fucking beer. Wow. I go to the club and everything. No, I come. On. And you still have money to pay your bills then? Yeah. Wow, you must make a lot of, mucho dinero. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, well, th listen, thank you. If you need me, give me a call, okay? okay. So uh, how, you, uh, how, 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 how do you work it out? We call it? Yeah, if you need help, right, if you know somebody that needs help right away, call me right there. Do you see? That's the phone number, 405 help. Uh, we have to go to where? No, I come to you. Oh, you or we could do it right over a Skype. You know what Skype is, right? That's a videotape on a computer. Uh -huh. We talk to each other video, uh -huh. or I can call you, or I can come to you, whichever. I live in the Hamptons. I used to live right over here on Bogota. Oh, I live in Shirley. In Shirley. Okay, my house used to be in Shirley, right by CVS, that big house. Uh -huh. They stands only built that, two, uh, 2000, in the year 2000. But, uh, yeah, all you have to do is call me, and we'll arrange how we can do it. But I want to give you an hour for free, and what I'll t show you is how... You can live without the alcohol, even if you don't want to stop all the way, but maybe cut down. You're not as he has. Yeah, he has. He has. Yeah, you can actually tell. Yeah. But that's okay uh, because I. A, he, he yeah. But I know what it's like because I used to be there. But uh, you're here doing laundry. Or you're here for the church. No, do, do the laundry. Yeah. We look, we live together. Oh, okay. You might want to take him and and I've known the pastor here for a long time, and uh, he gives away a lot of food and stuff. You might want to let him go over there and talk to him, and he'll get in touch with me but I can help him but he has to want it like you said here if he doesn't want it here he's not going to get help you know but give me a call if you okay. need me my name is Ralph and it's nice meeting you okay all right I'm going to shut this off hold on here and we Good afternoon, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to discuss how to quit drinking without AA, without Alcohol Anonymous. That is how I have succeeded. Uh, not necessarily what I'm going to be reading to you is exactly how I did it. However, I ended up with the same result. AA gives you the same result as what I end up with, which hopefully is 100% sobriety. First, before we go into that, what I do want to do is talk about uh, a shout out to my usual good friend, uh, Dr. Luis Gonzalez over at Starting Point. You can reach him at his 1-844-414-8444. What Dr. Luis Gonzalez does, he does one of two things or both of two things, depending on if you want to do both. First thing you want to uh, go to see him for is to go from your addiction to your recovery. What he will do 
is go day by day, 24 hours at a time with you from your addiction to your recovery. He will never talk about your past. He is not a counselor or a therapist. What he is is like myself, an addiction recovery coach. On the other side of his business, he can take you and mold you into becoming an addiction recovery coach. As long as you have the passion, the personality, and the professionalism, and some addiction background, uh, like for yourself, if you're uh, fighting your addiction, or uh, a loved one in your family, you can reach out to him at www.startingpointmn.com, or you can reach him at 844-414-8444. That's Dr. Luis Gonzalez from Starting Point. Now, you can also go to my websites. My websites are clearviews.info. What you have on there are informational videos, my own. Uh, I have over 100 videos now. Not necessarily all 100 are on that particular website, but I do have over 100 on uh, YouTube. You can find me at Take Your Life Back Channel 1, Take Your Life Back Channel 2, Take Your Life Back Channel 3. You can also go to clearreform.com, and what that is is my coaching where I will, like Dr. Luis Gonzalez, help you go from your addiction to your recovery. We're going to jump right into this now, because uh, this is a longer topic than usual. I'm going to bring this down a little so we can get to see me a little better, and that should be better. There we go. How to uh, quit drinking without alcohol anonymous. Now, this was an article that I found, uh, I believe, on The Fix, which is a uh, magazine for people that are going through uh, uh, addiction and fighting it and recovering. I'm going to read this now. What is behind your drinking? Understand why you drink. What, what makes you drink? What are some of the triggers? Is it stress? Is it financial? Is it just uh, something that you feel that you inherited or you probably did inherit it? Or is it something that just makes you feel good? Before you can use the core process effectively, it is vital that you recognize the problem. You do have to know that if you want to be or you want to learn how to fight with your addiction, two things have to happen. And I talk about this all the time. The number one thing, and I will always use this as number one, is to reach out to your higher power. Reach out to whoever your higher power is. In my case, it's my God. It is not one day that I will not go through the day without thanking the Lord for another day that He lets me stay on this beautiful earth, without thanking the Lord for giving me another day of sobriety. Number two is you have to stop denying. Stop denying the fact that you have a problem. The sooner you start admitting you have a problem, is the sooner that you will start uh, living with your addiction. In AA, alcoholism is viewed as a disease which is only a higher power that can help you with outside of AA. I, you know, I, I do agree with the uh, AA concept because it is the only way to live with your addiction and to overcome your addiction daily is with your higher power. So I do agree with them. However, there are other models of alcohol dependence. One use of a way is to look at a drinking problem is to view in the terms of survival instincts. The brain is divided into two basic parts which will, uh, we will call human brain and uh, animal brain. The animal brain is concerned only with survival and when you are chemically dependent on alcohol it falsely thinks that you need alcohol to survive. Because of this you could call it the booze brain. If you don't understand how the booze brain works it, is, it can easily trick the human brain into drinking. It believes that the only way for you to go from day to day, week to week, year to year is to keep drinking. However, I'm here to tell you it is not true. What the booze brain is, or the animal brain here, is called your uh, addiction disease. It's called the devil. It is the devil. The human brain is what God gave you. God didn't give you an animal brain. He didn't make you uh, give you a brain to make you think that that's the only way to survive. He gave you a human brain. If another part of your brain uh, is being called something different, that is the uh, devil within... Uh, uh, trying to uh, fight uh, through addiction to try to overcome you. Implement the core. Commit yourself to permanent abstinence from alcohol. That isn't a commitment that you have to do 24 hours at a time, day by day, week by week, month by month, and year by year. It is not something that you project and say, I will uh, drink uh, until next month and we'll go from there. You need to do 24 hours at a time. 
You do not need alcohol to survive. The animal brain, otherwise known as the devil that I choose to call, is telling you the only way to live is to survive with uh, alcohol. It's not true. When you reach out to your Lord Jesus, He will guide and direct you otherwise. Make a plan to quit for good. Sometimes it takes, like for me, June 22nd, 2013, to hit rock bottom. It wasn't pre-planned, it just happened. It was God's way of letting me, for all these years, and we're going to talk about the Book of Life again, for all these years, God just let me keep going, write my own chapters, until I just felt that I needed help writing my future chapters, and that's when I just uh, reach out to the Lord Jesus. If you are scared, panicked, angry, depressed, or feeling badly in some way, that's the booze brain or the devil at work. And in all honesty, you will feel bad at first. Your body has been operating with this chemical for however long it might have been for you. For my uh, 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 alcoholism, uh, it probably started uh, somewhere in my teens and went all the way until the age of 50 for me. Uh, your body has been operating with this chemical for however long it thinks it needs it and it will do whatever it can. And this is the the booze brain or the uh, animal brain will do whatever it can to convince the other side of your brain, which is the human brain, which is what God gave you uh, at birth, uh, to try to convince it to do otherwise. Um, whatever you do, do not listen to the booze brain. It has to learn how to operate without it now, and it's not happy. It's almost like you're putting holy water on the devil himself. Your neurons, which have been dulled by booze for quite some time and now are all in a buzz with activity, which means that resting and sleep will probably be hard to get for quite some time. Uh, you uh, might have the jitters in the beginning and you might have the dry heaves. Your booze brain will tell you lies, call it a liar, and watch late night TV as it uh, wants to keep you up. Uh, the devil will do whatever it takes to just convince you that you need to depend on the booze brain. You need to constantly keep drinking to survive and I'm here to tell you that you do not if you can do the two things number one is reach out to the Lord Jesus Christ and number two is to admit that you have a problem the objectivity of your booze brain the human brain is much smarter than the booze brain of course because the human brain is what God gave you the animal brain otherwise known as the booze brain is something that is uh, in you, within you and uh, you can overcome that between you and God and your human brain, you can overcome the devil himself. Uh, the human brain is much smarter than the booze brain, which doesn't understand that you can live without alcohol. You can outsmart your booze brain by learning to think of it as something that other than yourself, as well as to hear uh, when it's speaking to you. When, when your booze brain uh, wants you to start drinking, don't listen to it. When the booze brain uh, starts talking to you and you realize that it's not your human brain, not what God gave you, that's when you need to step back and you need to really understand that don't let some, it's almost like a third party living inside your head. Don't let that third party do anything. There should only be two parties in your head. That is you and your Lord Jesus Christ. If you are feeling good, it will tell you to drink, to party, to celebrate. In fact, it will try to use any event in your life, good or bad, as an excuse to drink. Whenever you have any thought of feeling or feeling that suggests drinking, that is the booze brain. That is the devil trying to suck you right back into his own life. Overcome that, but you need to include the Lord. There is no way to overcome alcoholism and learn how to fight with your addiction without having your higher power in mouth. There is no way. I don't care how you think you can do it on your own, there is no way. Just like there are other ways, other than AA, which we're reading about right now, to achieve the same results as AA, which is sobriety. I'm perfect proof of that. Respond to your bruised brain by saying never, whenever you hear it, asking for a drink. And your bruised brain, the devil, will constantly say you need to have another drink to survive. You need to just automatically say no. Let God speak for you. When God tells you no, you speak for him and tell the booze brain, otherwise known as the devil, no. This causes the booze brain to back down because it recognizes that you are not, that you, that it is not in control and there is no way to force you to pour down any alcohol uh, at all. 
because you are stronger than your bruised brain. Remember, any thought or feeling that suggests drinking at any time, the bruised brain will try to convince you to start doing that. That is when you step back and you start reaching out to your life. Don't argue with it. Don't argue with it. Don't uh, uh, debate it. Just say no. This Just Say No slogan by Nancy Reagan is, is uh, probably, it's only been around since 1986, but it's a terminology that's been used for as long as uh, um, humans have been alive, because Just Say No means no. Your booze brain will get more and more discouraged as time goes, bothering you less and less, but before long, you'll be an expert at dealing with your booze brain, making it easier to stay sober. Eventually, that booze brain won't even bother you at all. It doesn't bother me at all. Because God has moved His Spirit into my human brain, which is what God gave me at birth, which He has given you at birth. The booze brain is the devil that rents a room inside your head, and he will do whatever it takes to make you drink again. He wants to do relapse over and over again. He wants you to live in misery. He wants you to lie and steal. He wants you to abuse people. He wants you to God, even commit higher crimes than that, which possibly could be rape and murder. Don't let the booze brain do any of that. Enjoy your recovery from alcohol dependence. When you decide to quit drinking forever, one of the first difficulties you will face is simply dealing with the day-to-day -day reality without alcohol. If you sit at home and nothing, and you have nothing to do, your booze brain will be a pester for you to drink and will do whatever it can to, to disrupt any activities that you might want to do sober. Don't let it. Find yourself new hobbies, new friends, new environment. Get away from the old habits that you used to have. If you have a, a social gathering or a social network of friends that are strictly into uh, booze and drugs, you need to get away from that. I'm not saying not be friends with them, but don't, and in a social atmosphere, hang around with them. Don't be afraid that you'll slip or a relapse because it can happen. It happened to me six or seven times. But the fear is that the booze brain at work trying to give you the excuse to give up. That's what it'll do. Every time you uh, possibly will slip or have a relapse, the booze brain sticks their arms up and says, We have won. We are the champions, but don't let it happen. Eventually, the core process becomes automatic and mean you won't have to make a big effort to stay sober. And you won't. We're going to discuss some methods on how to stay sober. If the booze brain tries to use these feelings as excuses to drink because you're having a bad day, because you're financially stressed, your bills are overwhelming, don't let this happen. Every person, including me, daily can have some sort of trigger. But it's how you live with it. How do you deal with it? Today was a really rough day for my wife and I with certain little things here and there. But none of those things will side or derail my course of sobriety. I deal with it the best I can and I move on. And that's what you need to do. You'll be better, smarter, funnier, wittier, and even taller when you stand up to your booze brain. Show the booze brain, which is the devil, that you, the human brain, and your body have God within you. The devil never could stand up to God. Never. God is taller. God is stronger. And if God is within you, the booze brain and the devil have to disappear. It is all up to you to force that to happen. Here are some tips. Technically, the human brain is called the neocortex, and the animal brain, aka booze brain, is called the midbrain. The neocortex is complex conscious section of the brain. It's part of the brain that gives you the sense of individuality and of being you. The midbrain, on the other hand, is an unconscious section of the brain that regulates all your survival functions, such as breathing, eating, sex, etc. When you become dependent on alcohol, the booze becomes one of the midbrain survival um, drives. However, it can obtain alcohol if you make the subconscious decision and give into it. Let me just straighten this out. This is kind of cool. I'm sorry. This is like two seconds. Okay, there we go. The decision occurs when the neocortex, which is your human brain, um, uh, battles the, uh, the booze brain. 
and it never ever will lose as long as you have God within you. If the neocortex, you, can learn how to, uh, the midbrain works, which is the devil, the midbrain becomes powerless and obtain, to obtain any sort of, any drug, alcohol, in, in, to your body. You are in control and you can quit. The core process can work for other substance dependencies besides alcohol, which is drugs, of course. These techniques can be used to beat addictions to cigarettes, prescription drugs, street drugs, uh, and other dangerous substances. When it comes to quitting, all substance dependencies work the same way. Just replace words like alcohol and booze with words to relate to your addiction, whatever it may be. You do not have to use any drug or uh, intoxicating substance against your better judgment. The core process is similar and similar approaches can help you learn to take control quickly and the least possible effort. Addiction is a strong opponent, but knowledge and the Lord Jesus Christ within you is more power and uh, puts the uh, survival and the devil side of the animal brain to rest. Find something addictive instead of alcohol. You may be jogging. You could go walking. You can run a treadmill. You could be talking with your peers. You could ride a bike in some natural scenery nearby your house. Get yourself physically, ex physically exhausted with a deep need of fresh air and water. You may find another window of healthy lifestyle. I don't know why this is doing that. And we'll just go like that. There we go. Much better, folks. These are some warnings. If you have a very serious drinking problem and quit cold turkey for a period of time without the aid of medical or social support, but then choose to drink again, there is a real possibility that you will binge far in excess of your previous drinking habits. I say this all the time. You never, if you have a relapse, never ever fall into your old habits. You need to let go of your old habits. If you have a relapse, pick yourself up, dust your knees, and take your self-inventory. Find out what caused this relapse. Was it financial? Was it relationship? Was it stress? Find out what it is and don't let it happen again. The super binge can lead to alcohol poisoning, liver failure, and death in some cases. If you have very serious drinking problem like I did, you may need to check into a detox center for a few days to avoid medical problems. And I never did have to do that. Um, like I said, I've been very close to overdosing a few times. And uh, each time God protected me. We're going to talk about how God protected me in my uh, chapters in my book of life. Things you'll need, something else to do, giving yourself a distraction from your booze brain is an absolute priority. You need to do things differently. Reminder, sometimes your booze brain will try to trick you into drinking by bringing up memories of good times when you were drinking with your buddies and your friends. Fun party times with your friends and pleasant uh, situations that you were involved when you had alcohol. You'll need tools to counter this, such as a list of reasons why you could quit drinking. Was it because you're saving yourself, most importantly? Was it because uh, you, you're, you want to save your relationship with your husband and your wife? You want to save your relationship with your children? These are all things that you have to counteract with whatever the animal brain, which is the devil, is trying to do to you. Remember that time when you were drunk and you were laying in a corner, do you want to realistically start doing all that again? You can finish that thought with, I heard someone close to me, I got arrested, I missed work, or I was sick for an entire day when you found yourself in that predicament. Remember the Perceived temporary positives do not in any way equal the real long-term negatives of drinking. So, folks, what it all comes down to is there are ways to um, uh, go sober without AA. You need to implement the core. You need to uh, find out what is behind drinking. You need to include your how higher power no matter what you do when it comes to your sobriety. And, folks, and to be quite honest with you, let's put the drinking aside and the drugging. You need to include your higher power no matter what you do daily. No matter what you do daily. You need to include your higher power on how you are a role model at home, how you are as a human, how you are writing your chapters in your book, which we're going to discuss in a minute. You need to include your higher power. You need to identify the human brain of you, brain of you, which is you and your God, and the animal brain, which is the devil. The animal brain will do whatever it can to convince you that unless you drink, unless you smoke, unless you do crap, you cannot survive. I'm here to tell you you can. That's what you need to separate, the two parts of you, the devil and the animal brain, the human and God, uh, the uh, human brain and God. 
separate them. Depend on what God gave you when he created you, and that is the human brain. You were not born an animal. You don't have to have the survival instinct. And if you do have a survival instinct, it doesn't have to include any substance abuse. You need to have those tips. Technically, the human brain is called the neocortex, and the, and, it, and the animal brain is the booze brain, called a midbrain. You need to separate those two. Which one is of the important part? It's the neocortex. The neocortex is your human brain created by God who gave it to you. You can almost say he gave it to you on a loaner basis. He gave you this beautiful brain that is unbelievably designed by the Lord Jesus. He didn't give you this animal brain that has any only thoughts of survival because that's what the devil has, has, has moved himself into. Separate the neocortex from the midbrain. The midbrain is not you. The neocortex is. You need to watch out for the warning signs. If you have a very serious drinking problem and quit cold turkey for a period of a long time without aid of medical and social support, but choose to drink again, it will be a long, possibly very long binge drinking. No matter what, folks, I keep telling you, there is only two ways to battle your addiction. One is what I always tell you. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ, through my higher power, through your higher power. The other one is to stop denying. And when you have achieved those two things in your life, come up with a strategy. Lean towards somebody. Where am I going to go for my method of uh, treatment? Because you're going to have to have a strategy. You need to set a goal, and your goal should be sobriety. Agreed on that, right? So how do we get to that? Do we go through the AA channels, which you're certainly entitled to do so? AA has been around forever, and they've helped millions of people. AA is great for some people, not so good for other people. My methods are great for some people, not so good for other people. So go to AA, do the 90-90, which is 90 meetings in 90 days. If you don't like that, you can try other methods. I did go to AA four to five times. I felt I need to be more actively involved, and this is how I do this. I created clearviews.info for one purpose and one purpose only. It's to share what I have learned and read. To share with people like you. I have created and continuously create these videos not only for myself because this is my daily education, my daily plan to set my goal for sobriety. In order for me to achieve my daily goal is to create new videos. It's to continuously refresh both my web pages and continuously to go out and witness to other people. Like in my previous video I did on Neighborhood Road, Mastic Beach, when I interviewed a few people. You probably heard one interview in the beginning of this tape, and that was uh, from a, a lady that was standing on Neighborhood Road. And she explained that how long she was sober, and then when her daughter came, uh, who has a really bad drug and alcohol problem, when her daughter came, she fell right back into drinking herself, meaning this lady fell into it, drank a whole case of beer. But now, she's been sober again for quite some time. These are the everyday people that I run into. It is people like her and the other two interviews that you're going to hear on this videotape. The gentleman that only drinks on Friday nights into Sunday night, but he drinks the excess of a 200 and something dollars in the weekend of just beer. It's not even alcohol. That's a lot of beer. You'll hear from this other lady who lost her son on William Floyd Parkway due to her drugs. How she's lost her uh, one of her ex-husbands and her present husband, I believe, is also deceased. You'll hear about all these things. These are real stories from real people. I am a real person with an addiction. You watching me, hopefully, are real, which I know you are, and, but you have to have a real story. And the real story is not fabricated or twisted. It is the real story. There is nothing to be ashamed of by talking about the real story. If anything, you're helping people. So the methods are AA. You can try my method. And if you're one of those people that really has a drinking problem that cannot, be at home without running to the refrigerator or into the liquor cabinet. Check yourself into a rehab. There was one play, uh, part here. If you have a very serious drinking problem, you may need to check into a detox center for a few days to avoid medical problems. 
there is nothing wrong with doing that. And they'd certainly take insurance and Medicaid, and if you don't have any of those, go to your st state's website, look up your state, and uh, look to see what they have for money-challenged people. And if you still have a problem, find something. You can text me at 631-599-0218 or call me at 844-405-HELP, and I will try to help you. Now, I do on my website, clearviews.info, uh, between pages uh, 6 and 8, you'll find an icon that says Rehab and Treatment Centers. Press on that icon and you'll find two columns with 50 states. Press on the state you live in and see if there's a uh, rehab center near you. However, if you don't see a rehab center that's listed on my list, go to your Google search bar, put in Rehab Treatment Centers and the location that you live in and you should be able to find something. So those are three different methods and there are many, many more methods. There's the Lions Club, there's the Knights of Columbus, YMCA, churches offered, so there's tons and tons, but every, whatever method you choose, whether it's AA, my method, the detox centers, they all are shooting, hopefully, for the same thing, and that is for you to be sober. It is to achieve sobriety. Our goal is to achieve sobriety, and the only way to achieve sobriety is by educating yourself. And the only way to educate yourself is by continuously reading and studying on your problem, on your disease, on your addiction. And you need to include your higher power daily. If you're ready to start that today, that is excellent and I applaud you for that. We also have to understand that a lot of these things start in your own home. Your children look at you as the hero, as the role model. So if when you smoke and you drink and you use profanity and you physically abuse another person in your home, you are creating the uh, creating the identical mini you. Whatever you do, your child will copy. It's the monkey see, monkey do, uh, monkey do attitude. That's all it is. So if you want your kid to go into society as a drinker, a smoker, a foul mouthed person, and an abuser. Do that in front of your sh children every day. And when they do go out in this society, do not be surprised if you see them on Jerry Springer, Maury, or uh, Steve Wilkos. But if you don't want your children to do that, don't smoke in front of them. Don't drink in front of them. Don't use profanity, and certainly don't abuse anyone in front of them. Where at all, when it comes to abuse. If you need to smoke, go outside your home and do it. If you need to drink, go outside your home and do it. Do you need to use that profanity? Go into the bathroom and do it. And if you physically think that you need to go through life hurting people, you need therapy and counseling. And if you're the victim of physical abuse, you need to call the authorities on the person that's abusing you. It is simply so much easier to have the authorities take your loved one in handcuffs and hopefully your loved one will seek help through a counselor or a therapist then for the authorities to take you in a body bag because a punch and a slap here will become a knife or a gun eventually because everything just like drinking even abuse will escalate into something higher or stronger what started in my life and my chapters in my book of life started with a little bit of alcohol when i was born in 1961 all the way to let's say 1979 17 years I wrote my chapters in my book of life with my parents because that is the role model uh, responsibility of the parents is to help write their children's books. I was an average kid, I, however I've already started drinking alcohol. In 1979 I decided to leave home and go to college. 1981 I joined the Marine Corps. By 1981 I was so heavily involved in alcohol already. Uh, during my two years in college, it was not about the studying, it was about the dating of the girls and drinking alcohol. So I joined the Marine Corps, and as I was sitting in boot camp, a chaplain tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to become a lay leader. And what a lay leader is, and the reason I'm bringing this up because I'm setting the stage on what's going, what, what I'm going to fast forward to. What a lay leader is, is a liaison between the recruits and the chaplain. What is an addiction recovery coach? It's a liaison between the addiction and recovery. So then, God tapped me on my shoulder and asked me to be a lay leader because what the chaplain said to me came directly from God, and I know that, and that is 
that they noticed, or he noticed, that I was very good with other people, that I always had a concern for humans, that I always motivated. So, okay, I became a lay leader. Fast forward again. Now, mind you, I've now been writing two years of my own chapters in my book since I left my parents. And now I'm going to fast forward to 1983. Over Beirut, Lebanon, we have a bombing. We lost 241 Marines. Uh, we lost uh, 14 personnel uh, combined between Navy personnel and civilians. My drinking became even worse. But yet God protected me because I had an accident in Beirut. God protected me from certain death. Let's fast forward now to 2009. Now from 79 to 2009, I got to write 30 years of my own chapters, and they have not been good chapters. They were good when it came to the human part side of me, but not good when it came to the alcoholism. 2009 now, I'm in Alaska, which I was going every month for 10 days to work with different doctors, and what we did is supply eye and eye care to Eskimos and veterans. I have a bad accident in the Arctic Circle put me out for three years physical therapy. Again, God protected me from certain death. In between 2009 and 2013, I'm going to fast forward, I could have at least had two or three overdoses. Each time, God protected me from certain death. So in 2011, God tapped me on the shoulder again and wanted to see if I was ready to continue doing what I started in 81 as a lay leader. And that's when I formed Master Beach Outreach 2011, which is to help people again. It's to take the people that had no money and get them something. If they didn't have money, I would get them food. If they didn't have money, I would get them clothing. If they didn't have money to hire somebody to, to do things like small repairs or get tires, that's what I would do. God, again, knew that I've always been that human to help others. But he also knew that I still was an alcoholic. So God let me keep going, writing my own chapters in my book, until 2013. And in 2013, I finally realized that I cannot handle my own life. I can't keep writing my chapters in my book. Because if I continuously write my chapters in my book, I would be dead within a year or two. Because it got to the point where I was drinking 10 to 15 shots of vodka a day. So on June 22nd, 9, uh, 2013, I hit rock bottom. It is then where I reached up and I asked my higher power to help me, to help write the rest of my chapters in my book. Remember, the book starts at your birth and ends at your death. A lot of chapters in between. Every year is one chapter. So at this point, I was now 50, yeah, 50 years old. So 50 chapters have been written. Out of the 50 chapters, I wrote, uh, how many, 31 myself. Those 31 were not good chapters. As a human, they were good, but not as an alcoholic. When God extended his long arm into the pit of rock bottom and pulled me up, it is then that God knew that my work would start now that he intended in 1981 as a lay leader for me to continue going. Out of nowhere, God brought Dr. Luis Gonzalez into my life. He's a professor. He molded me into becoming a master addiction recovery coach. And from there, I just ran, rewriting chapters in my own book. It is today that I sit here humbly telling you that every chapter until my death will include things as helping you with your addiction, will include things as how to be a better husband, how to be a better father, how to be a better grandparent, otherwise AKA known as Opa, which is Grandpa in German how to be a better human to society and humanity itself. Those are the chapters that I will be writing in my book. But every chapter will include a word that none of the other chapters before 2013 had, and that is God. Sobriety and God have to be in every chapter from this point on. I can't just have sobriety without God. I could have God without sobriety if I didn't have an addiction problem, but I do have the addiction problem, so sobriety and God will be in every chapter. That is the book of life. How is your book of life? Are you a good role model? Can you go to the mirror and say you are a good human? And being a good human does not just mean that you financially take care of people. Do you 
drink and smoke in front of your children? Do you use profanity? Do you domestically abuse your spouse? If you answered yes to any one of those, you need to change. You need to change today. And the bigger question is, is do you have a drug or a drinking problem? And if the answer is yes, you need to change. Because folks, you got to remember, there might not be a tomorrow. I learned this firsthand today. I'm not at liberty to go into details, but someone within the close circle of my life unexpectedly just died. That is my point here. You can just go to bed and never wake up. Where does that leave your chapters in your book of life? Remember, people will remember the last chapters in your book of life. So where does that leave you? You need to treat today as if, as if it was possibly your last day on earth. Would you, if you knew tomorrow you weren't going to be here, would you leave this earth cursing, swearing, drinking, drugging, hitting? Would you leave your earth that way? Well, that's what you have to pretend. Each, just like a, a drunk going through addiction recovery needs to concentrate on 24 hours. That's what you need to do daily. Always think that today, possibly, is your last day on earth. Because one day it will be. And God already knows when that is. And thank God he doesn't tell us because that would make us very nervous. But one day it will be. So folks, the bottom line is that you need to make decisions. Use the part of the brain that God gave you, and that's called the cortex. Don't use the midbrain, which is the animal survival brain, which is also aka the devil. Let the cortex, which is your human brain that God gave you, make all your decisions. Decisions such as, should I smoke in front of my kids? Should I drink? Should I hit? Should I be a bad human? Or are you going to use the devil's side of the brain, which is the midbrain, and say, well, the only way for me to go through life is to drink or to hit people or to smoke or use profanity? Because I'm telling you right now, that is not what God intended for you. God intended you to utilize what he gave you. One way to compare this or make an example is God gave you a Mercedes brain. A Mercedes brain. The mid midbrain, which is the animal survival brain, is a uh, an old, old Ford brain. It's a clunker with 300,000 miles on it. Utilize what God gave you, that Mercedes brain. That's all I really want to tell you folks. It is today that you need to start working out your plans for the future. Your plans for the future includes today. Today only. Reach out to me, 631-599-0218. Or you can also reach out, 844-405-HELP. Go to my informational website, www.clearviews.info. That's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. Or go to Clear Reform, which is for coaching. C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M dot com. You can find me on Bing. You, 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 Yahoo, Google, Dogpile, Dig, Blogger, um, Twitter. You can go on Facebook. Now we have the open group called Clear Reform. I think we have about 210 members now. It is an open group. You can go on to two pages on Yahoo on, on uh, Facebook, which one is Clear Used I Info and the other one's Clear Reform. All this information that's here for you, and it's all at no cost. These videos are all at no cost. Folks, if I just get two people to be sober until tomorrow, that is an accomplishment. One person is always going to be part of that two equation. That is me. Will the other one be you? Out of the thousands that watch these videos, will you be that one person? And it doesn't take a lot. All it takes is to stop the denial and start accepting that there is a higher power. That you can't write your own chapters in your book. If you're going through troubled times daily, you cannot write the chapters in your book. Why not hand that pen to God? Let him help you write those chapters.
from today on. And you know what? It doesn't matter from the chapters before. When I spoke about 61 all the way till now, it doesn't matter. God will forgive you. God will say, if you commit your life to me today, all that is forgotten. And he is one of those gods, or he is the God, that will never bring up the past to you. The past is the past. Like I am an addiction recovery coach, I will never talk about your past because I am only concerned for you for today and tomorrow. And that's what God's concern is for you. He is concerned about you today and your tomorrow. A lot of people that don't reach out to God will possibly go to their last chapter in their book, otherwise known as their end, their death, with the unknown. I want to make sure that when I leave, I know that people will talk good about me. People will know that I have been a good human to miss my ability. But God also knows that we are all human. We all make mistakes. And we make mistakes daily. But it is up to us to do the best we can as humans. To live the best life. To be the best role model as a parent or grandparent or guardian. Folks, Utilize the information that I gave you here about going either to AA. Now, today's topic was how to live without going to AA. Doesn't necessarily mean that I'm saying that you don't need to go there. I'm just saying there are alternatives. People are under the assumption that AA is the only way to go. And I'm here to tell you I am proof that I've only been there four or five times. And I am a crusader in the fight of addiction. You can live with addiction without having to go to AA. But you can also go to AA. You can also go to detox centers. As long as you include your higher power, you can do any of those things. Remember, I always tell you, you need to let the sun shine into your heart and into your home. And if you do that, you will get nothing but positive results. But if you let the darkness into your life, I guarantee you, you will only get negative results. And if you keep a sober today, you will definitely have a better tomorrow. And each and every day when I do these videos, if you believe what I'm telling you in here, it will become clear out there. It will become so crystal clear what I'm telling you out there. But you have to start believing in your mind. Use your cortex, which is your human brain. Use it clearly there. And if that midbrain, which is also known as the booze brain, which is also aka the devil, tries to overtake you, tell your midbrain that your cortex, which is your human brain, and the power of God will not let the midbrain or the devil take you over. Because the minute the devil does that, you will find yourself in situations that are going to bring you back to your past. Situations like blackouts. Situations like you don't remember how many beers and how many drinks you had. Situations like maybe DWI and being arrested. Situations on domestic abuse. Do not listen to the midbrain. Utilize your cortex that was given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your brain. Don't think the only way for you to survive is with that animal instinct. And that is to have uh, drugs and alcohol. Because you can't survive without it. It all starts here in your body and your mind and from there once you stop denying you ask for your guidance from above in combination of those two that will mold you into a well-balanced human and then each and every day you just educate yourself and you keep going you educate yourself with information from whatever utilization you want to use your AA my methods detox centers church Whatever you want to utilize, the bottom line is, is education, action plan for a goal to achieve. And folks, I've said this and I'm going to say it one more time. I didn't say it in yesterday's video. Is We all go to bed at night and most of us wear slippers, sneakers, or shoes. Right before we go to bed, we take them off and we just kind of sit them at the edge of the bed. Why not push them under your bed tonight? That way, when you get up in the morning, you'll have to drop to your knees to get them from under your bed. And while you're on, the, on your knees, 
give a big thank you to your Lord Jesus for letting you live another day in this beautiful world, in this beautiful earth. Pray to God to have a good day, a productive day, and pray to God to keep you sober for the day. And start being generous to your neighbors, to your family, because the way you came into this earth is with nothing, and the way you're going to leave is with nothing. So if you think by holding on to all your personal belongings, to holding on to your extra furniture you might have that could be helping other people or extra clothing or extra money that could be helping people in need by holding on to them. God forbid when you die, you can't go with you. There will never be a U-Haul truck behind your hearse. The U-Haul truck carrying your personal belongings will never be behind your hearse. So why not start sharing today? Show God that you do have compassion and kindness within your heart. Share with people in need. And it could be people that you don't even know. Get a bag of clothing and shoes and whatever and take it to your local drop box. Take some of your old furniture and bring it to uh, over to the Salvation Army. But you have to start sharing with other people, folks. It is that simple. So do the slippers, sneakers, or shoes under your bed, and then tomorrow morning, thank God for another day. He let you stay on this beautiful earth. And always thank God for your family, for your children, and start being the role model that you know that you can be. Don't let the midbrain tell you how to be a role model because then you're going to find yourself in situations like hitting, cursing, drinking, and smoking. Let the cortex, the human brain, God's creation in your mind be your transmission in your life. For a smooth ride with the Lord Jesus, it will happen. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this segment. It was very uh, uh, touching to... to find out that there is life without AA. There is a way to quit drinking without AA. Not to say that you have to do it without AA because AA is huge and has helped millions of people. I am just merely giving you an alternative. Please go to www.startingplintmn.com That's startingpoint.com Dr. Luis Gonzalez 844-414-844. Go to him if you need to have some uh, re addiction recovery coaching done on you or a loved one. Or go to him if you want to become an addiction recovery coach. Also, please get in touch with me. Text me with any reason whatsoever at 631-599-0218. Call me, 844-405-HELP. Uh, you can email me at clearreform at Yahoo, that's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M at Yahoo. Go to my website for the informational part of it. Go to clearviews.info. Find tons of information, pages and pages full of stuff, all for you, all free of charge. If you need coaching by me, you can go to www.clearreform.com, that's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M. Together, all of us, as a community, our lessons empower us for addiction recovery. That's merely what CLEAR stands for. Community Lessons Empower Addiction Recovery. Let us all as a community work together. I am here for you. Dr. Gonzalez is here for you. The Lord Jesus Christ is here for you each and every minute of your day for the rest of your life if you allow him to. You need to reach out to him. Do two things today if you're ready is stop denying and include God. Do those two things and mark today, September 23rd, 2014 on your calendar because today is the beginning of your new life. Folks, have a sober today and I guarantee you'll have a better tomorrow. And as always, please don't drink and please don't do drugs and please stay sober and God bless you. Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today is September 4th. It's about 3.30 in the morning. I just want to share with everyone something this morning. Uh, I saw a demonstration uh, maybe about a month ago in reference to our dark side and the power of prayer. If you continuously pray over and over and over again, things will eventually become clear. Although that was a lot of times when we pray to God, we don't get answers right away. Uh, but if you continuously pray 
over and over things become clear. So the demonstration involves this bottle, and if you see the inside of this bottle is all dark liquid. That represents our dark side, and this cap represents our limitations. So we as a human, which is the bottle, have limitations, which is this cap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this bottle into the sink, and we're going to do a demonstration. So let me put that there. I'm going to turn the camera around so that everybody can see it. And hopefully you folks can all see it now. Okay, so you see the bottle. I'm going to turn the water on. Okay, so now everything inside is dark, which represents our body and our inside. And what I'm going to do, and this clear water represents our prayer, so you see the continuous water running. I'm going to now, as the prayer, uh, as we're praying, I'm going to lift our limitations, which is the cap. And we're going to slowly add our prayer to this. We all go through dark times. I mean, I've had some dark years. I just didn't understand everything that was happening. I'm going to admit it that I'm not a super patient person. I tend to want answers right away and know what's happening and when I, uh, what I can do to solve it. I don't like not being happy and confident about things. It's just not who I am. But when I get down, it takes a lot for me to get back up. If we pray for a sign, which is this, the water is prayer, but just give up because we feel like God's already heard our prayer and he knows what we need, but he hasn't answered. It's kind of like when we were kids in the toy store and we kept asking our mom and dad for toys but we never got any results yeah it never worked for me either but you get what I mean anyway that is exactly what's happened to me in the past years I have prayed and prayed and prayed but haven't really gotten any results the answer I thought God would give me uh, and especially in a time of, of frame I thought my problems would be fixed which was all before 2013 then in 2013 my cap of limitations was lifted. This is the cap. Remember this now. Was lifted off the bottle, which is my body. Here is where I will just show you how that worked for me. So basically, we all have dark sides, which is what's in the bottle, was in the bottle. We are facing, and we take the limitations off our mind, which was the cap I lifted. Don't limit what he can do, because we have to just trust in the Lord. That sometimes, even after we pray and we just give up, and it is often why we get defeated. However, even though nothing has really changed, we just keep praying. That's the prayer, the sign of the prayer, the flowing Lord. Just keep praying and never, ever give up praying. And if we do that and devote ourselves completely to the Lord, He will pull us through. The dark times will go away and we just have to be patient. I know it's hard. Being patient truly is a virtue. But by never, ever giving up on prayer, it's going to show you that God will eventually answer all your prayer. And the more we pray, which is this water going into the bottle, one day everything will become clear. You see how clear this is now? That is the power of prayer. Folks, I think that demonstration says it all. If we had a bottle which represents our body and the bottle, uh, everything was dark on the inside, and the water coming out of the faucet represents the prayer day after day after day just keeps adding to the darkness which was in the bottle eventually all that prayer has to turn what was dark inside this bottle which is our body has to change and become as clear as this water in here that folks is the power of prayer Hello folks, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I just want to share my story uh, with um, my situation back in 1981 in the United States Marine Corps. I was sitting in a chapel during boot camp and a uh, chaplain tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to come into his quiet room. As I was walking into his quiet room, I had no idea what he wanted from me. It was then that uh, God was setting my life in motion. Uh, so the chaplain sat me down and he says, Ralph, I've noticed that you like to help people, you motivate people, you're always walking around with a smile. And I wanted to know, and this is the chaplain saying this to me, I wanted to know, Ralph, would you like to uh, volunteer and become a lay leader?
And of course, I had no idea what a lay leader was. Uh, so he explained to me what a lay leader was. It's somebody that is a liaison between the recruits and the chaplain. So when the recruits have issues, problems, or anything uh, like that, they go to the lay leader and, uh, I mean, excuse me, they go to the chaplain as the lay leader uh, to, to uh, let the chaplain know of the situations that are happening. It was then, in 1981, that God already had a plan for me and, and what when there from from that point on was that God realized that no matter how long it would take for me to achieve what God already knew what was going to happen to me he would let me go down into the worst extremes in life so from 1981 as a lay leader and I'm going to show you the medal now with a lay leader to front and the back this is the back of the medal and then the front looks like this so in 1981, at Par Paris Island, South Carolina, when I became a lay leader, God already had my life set in motion. But again, he wanted me to set my own course in life. So I went down the years and the course of my life and, and uh, did some of the worst things possible to my own body uh, through alcoholism. God already said to himself, well, I'm going to wait for Ralph to... Uh, get close to hitting rock bottom. So from 1981 until 2011, which is 30 years, God came to me again and he said, Ralph, are you ready to continue helping other people? That's when I um, formed Mastic Beach Outreach 2011 and what that was is for uh, older people and uh, mentally and physically challenged people that my wife and I would help them by giving them clothing, food, uh, possibly like in one case tires for someone's car and um, so God said okay he is getting better uh, but he's still not ready to do what I really wanted him to do so in 19 excuse me in 2011 I continued my alcoholism uh, to the point of 10 to 15 shots a day as time went further to two years down the road it became worse and worse with my alcoholism in 2013 God finally put his big hand on my head and says, are you ready now? That is when I hit rock bottom, June 22nd, 2013. I reached out and I finally admit that I had an alcohol problem. It was then when God lifted me up and, and set my life in motion for today, September 2nd, 2014. So from 2013 until 2014, I continue educating myself and you, others, through my websites, through my, uh, my uh, videos on how to battle with addiction. And God saw this and he said, he, he said to himself, Ralph is still continuing helping people. So in between 2013 and 2014, as, as time was going by and, and I proved to God that I was really reforming myself, uh, that God uh, introduced me to uh, Dr. Luis Gonzalez. I had been toying with the idea of about becoming a substance abuse counselor until I ran into uh, an article about recovery coaching. So I thought it was very ironic that God had planted Dr. Luis Gonzalez from starting point, that's S T A R T I N G P O I N T M N dot com, 844-414-844, into my life. Dr. Luis Gonzalez gave me the educational uh, programming to turn me into a recovery coach. So between while I was training for Dr. Luis Gonzalez to become a recovery coach and today my father comes from South Carolina to visit and we're looking at my shrine which my wife calls a shrine which is all my Marine Corps ribbons and medals and my father asked me, Ralph, what is this medal for? What is, what is this particular medal for? And I then said to myself, here's where it all came together. I finally realized what that medal stood for and how it influenced me and my life. It was back in 1981 that God knew already that I would eventually, towards the middle uh, or 60% uh, of my life, be out to help other people, to continuously help other people, to motivate people, to coach people. So it was from 1981 to 2011 that I ran my life to the ragged ends, to the pit of the worst. And then from 2011 to 2013, even worse than that. And then June 22nd, 2013, 
finally helped myself up with the grace of God and in 2014 became an addiction recovery coach and all that epiphany came to me due to my father asked me what this stood for this particular silver medal when he asked me that it all finally came together that God had bigger and better plans for me and this is what I'm telling you folks there is a plan for you no matter what the plan might be you don't know what it is but there is a plan for you it's just a matter of you figuring it out so why don't you let me help take your life back thank you God bless you and have a sober day Created using Powtoon.